Hello folks, Cecil Pearson Jr. here again. Third video of the day. Wow, that must be some kind of record for me. <clears throat> First off, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has donated to that family up the road. I appreciate that. I pray that God blesses you. I would also like to say to you folks who are <clears throat> giving them a little trouble in the comment sections on my videos about not being able to donate but being able to pray, please don't do that. <clears throat> please don't. Prayer is one of the most important things anybody can give to another person. Because you're not giving just some money. You're giving your time, your mind, your thoughts. You're giving yourself to the other person that you're praying for, for the length of time that you pray. Please don't diminish the importance of that. Don't be judgy. Don't be judgy. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> to the heart and meat of this. Several people have asked me about the Great Tribulation and to please do a video on it. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, you've got some preachers who preach that Jesus is coming back before tribulation. You have some preachers that preach that Jesus is coming back mid-tribulation. And then you have some preachers who preach that Jesus is not going to come back until after tribulation. Whew. Ooh, my nose itches. Now, Jesus has told us that if he doesn't come back before the end of tribulation, might not be nobody saved. Think about that for a minute. Going to be that rough. <clears throat> now, me, I personally, I preach, pray that Jesus comes before tribulation, but have the faith to make it to the end. You understand that? Pray that Jesus comes before tribulation, but have the faith that is strong enough to see you through until the end of tribulation. And buddy, that's going to take some strong faith. See, <clears throat> during the great tribulation, the, the Antichrist will be here. He will be set up. He will be in full power and in control of the world. He will also be in control of one world religion. And that religion will not be Christianity, folks. Won't be. But... A Christian better not be caught with a Bible, in a church, praying, preaching, teaching, or even talking <clears throat> about Jesus during this time. If so, it will mean sudden death. Right then you'll be killed. But that's a good thing because Jesus said, Blessed are they who are persecuted for my name's sake. Okay? Okay? Think about that now. Now, it's easy for me because I've seen heaven and hell. I know that it's there, but it's difficult for people who haven't. Because <clears throat> you have to go on just faith. Just faith. Now, I count on God for a lot of things. But I don't have to count on faith to know that He is there. I've seen Him. I know that He's there. Okay? Okay? Now, understand this. What would you do if you were told with a gun to your head, denounce Christ or we're going to blow your brains out? <clears throat> would you denounce him to live? I would not. Kill me, I'll be with Jesus. That quick gets over, I'm there. Okay? But what would you do? Would you denounce Christ to live? Or would you allow them to kill you for your beliefs? That's a personal choice. That's where your faith comes in. And here's a harder question. What would you do if they had a gun to one of your children's head or a knife to their throat or had their, their body in a guillotine? What would you do then? Denounce Christ, accept the Antichrist religion or we're going to kill your children what would you do 
Personally, I would look at my child and say, make sure your prayers are said because daddy ain't denouncing Christ. I see in a minute. They kill one kid, that child's with Jesus. They kill another kid, that child's with Jesus. And so forth through my whole family. I'm not denouncing Christ. I won't. Because when they finally get to me, they're going to kill me. They're going to have to. And when they kill me, I'll be with my family, my children, my wife, and Jesus in heaven. And I'll be free from the pain and the suffering and the bondage that, and the tribulations that will be at that point in this life. <clears throat> you know, the Bible says to pray, pray that at the time of great suffering, that the time of great tribulation, that a child is not suckling. That tells you how bad it's going to be. Folks, being a Christian is easy right now because we have the freedom in most parts of the world to worship as we choose, as we see fit. However, being a Christian during the Great Tribulation will get you killed. It will not be easy. There will be no Bibles. They'll collect them, they'll burn them. And all you'll have is the Bible verses that you've committed to memory, which is why it's important for you to study the Word. That way, you have the Word in you. They can take your Bible, they can cut your tongue out, but they can't take away the thoughts that are in your head. And let me tell you, whoo, glory, if you've got the Word of God inside your head and inside your heart, the only way they can take that away from you is to kill you and then praise God you're with Jesus then. So it's a win-win for you. You get my drift? It's a win-win for you. So, my answer to the great tribulation is very simple. It's very simple. It's pray that Jesus comes before tribulation, but be ready to live in it and through it if need be. That may mean starving to death. That may mean watching your children starve to death. But church, you got to have the faith if you want to get in the door. Jesus was nailed to a cross. Nailed to a cross. He knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane and He said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from Me. He was afraid of what He had to face. Jesus, the walking, talking, God on foot, was afraid in the flesh for what was about to happen. But he went further and said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Which means, God, if you want me to do this, I will. I really wish there was another way, and if you can find one, I would appreciate it. But if you can't, I'll die for you. And that's the way I feel right now. If there be another way, then show it to me. But if need be, I will lay down my life for my faith and my belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you? Can you? Can you watch your children die because of your faith in Jesus? You better be able to. You better have faith strong enough to know that when that child dies, glory, they are in heaven. And you'll be there in just a minute. Just a minute. I can't tell you what to do. But I can tell you this. The Great Tribulation is not going to be a joke. I don't know if it'll come in my lifetime or my children's lifetime or their children's lifetime. The Bible says, No man know the hour nor the day that the Son of God shall come again. Nobody knows. When, even Jesus doesn't know. When he's going to come again. Only God knows that. You feel me? Only God knows. 
So all these people running around saying, Ooh, the Lord's coming back in 2028. They don't know that. They don't know that. God has not revealed it to Jesus. He's not going to reveal it to us. The Bible plainly states He will come again as a thief in the night. Do you know when a thief's going to break into your house? No. You don't know when Jesus is going to come back either. So the answer to the question is nobody knows when the rapture or second coming of Christ will take place. Nobody knows. They don't know if it'll be before tribulation, the middle of tribulation, or after tribulation. But what we do know is Jesus has already promised us Tribulation is going to be hard. It's going to be rough. And unless he gets to come before the end of it, might not be nobody saved. Understand? Amen? I love you, but not as much as God.